Uh, well, hello everyone. Uh, my name is Martin. Uh, last Tuesday, I finished my master thesis at the TU. Uh, the study program is called Audio Communication and Technology. And the project I'm going to talk about today was, well, it was at Master Thesis. So it's kind of fresh, and that's the first presentation I do about that. Uh, yeah, since we finished it. And what we did is we created an ensemble of three uh, electronic music instruments, virtual music instruments in pure data. Pure data. Uh, and these instruments, they are to be used to learn or to teach uh, electronic music, basics of audio technology, and, well, basically digital media and its music in schools. And, well, like I said, it's uh, built in PD. So the ensemble is open source. And that's why the instruments can be described as uh, open educational resources, OER. Uh, you might have heard of that, but I'll get into that later because I think it's a pretty interesting aspect of the project. Yeah, what I want to do today is present it like 20 or 30 minutes max and after that uh, the instruments can be tried out and I would be very happy if I could get some like constructive criticism concerning the structure of the code and well every other aspect of the ensemble because well I'm talking about we all the time my uh, colleague who's uh, did the master thesis with me he's uh, sick in bed right now has a bad headache and that's why I have to improvise a little bit concerning his part yeah. Okay, um, let's have a look at the content. We did the project within the 3D Min research project. That's why I'm going to talk about that at first. Then I'm going to talk a, bit, a, little, a little bit about the background and the ideas and the motivations behind the whole uh, project. Then I'm going to go into OER and why this is relevant for our project. And then I'm gonna uh, present the ensemble itself. Okay, first of all, the uh, 3D Mint project. Uh, 3D Mint stands for Design Development and Dissemination of New Musical Instruments. And it's an interdisciplinary research project between the UDK Berlin, Berlin and the TU Berlin. It's been running for, I don't know, three years now and it will finish in October. Yeah, and it's basically, they, yeah, like the uh, name says, they're designing and building uh, new musical instruments there. Uh, well, and they're concentrated mainly on the interfaces. Maybe you've heard of the push-pull. That's a, well, that's a big thing that happens there, sort of. And at the moment, they're playing a lot of concerts with that uh, instrument. Yes, and uh, our project is linked to the aspect of dissemination within the 3D Min project. Yeah, like I said, we want to do uh, what we try to do is to build instruments to for music education. And uh, there's a nice formulation in the funding application for the Einstein Stiftung that finances the whole project. And this formulation describes uh, the basic problem uh, of our ensemble pretty good. And there it says that the instruments that are to be developed within the 3 d Mint project are supposed to realize an intuitive access to the world of electronic and computer music in the context of music education. Compared to classical music and its instruments, modern electronic music still is neglected here and thus this innovation is urgently needed. So. When we read that, uh, that was our point of departure for uh, starting this project. So this is basically what we did. We built instruments that can do what was said in the formulation I just showed. But why did we do it? Okay, I'm going to start from the very beginning now. It's like... I mean, like you all may know, uh, music and technology always have formed a very strong symbiosis. That might sound a little bit trivial, but um, actually, it's I think it's quite important because when you look at music education, 
Uh, there are a lot of music educators who, who see music as a somewhat natural thing, like very naturalistic, and they see a strong contradiction between music and technology, and they are not able to to uh, to understand that that music as we know it wouldn't exist without technological progress. So. In general, technology and music have formed a strong symbiosis. That means that production, performance, storing, processing and, and listening to music is always technologically determined. And therefore, uh, technological changes always have an impact on music culture. And most importantly, they affect listeners in their everyday lives. And especially the digitalization, it uh, further intensified the, this symbiosis. And, and well, I would say that, that um, digital media sort of defines uh, the current reality of music culture. And so, and the next step of our argumentation is that uh, technology affects young listeners. And these young listeners that use digital media in their everyday lives to listen to, to make music, to talk about music. Um, the most interest, interest, interesting aspect of uh, digital, new digital music media is uh, that, that, it, that it can be used to actively shape music culture. Like you can, I don't know, make a song and upload it on the internet and then talk about it. So... Um, a new aspect of, of uh, these digital media is that you actually uh, shape music culture by using it. But in doing so, you are always endangered, and especially young people can be endangered to somehow, somehow get lost in the complexity of that all. That means you, uh, I mean, your own contribution to that music culture that you give via digital media can can seem somehow unimportant when you are confronted with the vast mass of, of uh, musical information on the internet. Well, and most of all, for many young people, they use digital media all the time, but they have no idea how it works. For them, it's uh, like a black box. And... Well, what I'm trying to say is that many people, especially young people, lack a, a certain ability to understand technology, which, uh, in like in, in, in the literature and uh, in yeah in research, it's called uh, media literacy. That might be uh, a solution for this problem, but. The problem here in Germany is, and I think it can be, uh, it's, it's, it might be the same in other countries, at least that's what the literature says. Um, the problem here is that German music education is pretty conservative. Traditionally, uh, German music education favors the preservation of cultural traditions. And it sort of refuses to integrate cultural changes, and especially if they concern technological aspects of music. Um, like I said before, that one reason for that is that a lot of um, music educators see music as a really naturalistic thing and, and see a strong contradiction between music and technology. Um, yeah, and this is why like before the year 2000, there was a very ideological debate within music education. And there were, on the one hand, there were the critics and they always uh, were talking about alienation from music by using uh, digital media to make music. And then on the other side, there were the supporters who always stressed the cultural importance of, of digital media and its music. And... Yeah, and there were the, uh, these two sides were uh, stuck in a really ideological, fundamental debate, and there were hardly any consequences in in the practice. And then around the year two thousand, 
uh, suddenly this well this debate stopped because uh, everybody was kind of frustrated with the status quo and um, a very pragmatic handling was developed and then the music education was able to uh, to send impulses towards like uh, educational policy and academical training at the universities and the uh, didact didactical practice within the classroom but and these changes they happen at the moment but not at all everywhere and very often very hesitantly finally well german uh, digital music culture still is still is not a crucial part of german music education it never was and it isn't there might be exceptions sure but yeah i'm talking in general here yeah and the main obstacles that a lot of music teachers regularly talk about uh, are the high costs and the complexity of music software and also teachers often lack the skills or the experience dealing with digital music media that means they well basically they lack uh, media literacy and finally, uh, educationally appropriate software for the use in music classrooms is very rare. And so, yeah, that, that's the motivation behind our project. And that's why we decided to um, construct software that can be used in music education in schools. Okay, I'm gonna, and like I said before, these instruments we build can be described as OER. Yeah, and like I said, I think it's a pretty interesting aspect because actually we just realized at the end of our project when we just finished the, the master thesis that what we are doing there is an OER and is then sort of a part of a bigger context. Yeah, and um, so what are OERs? Uh, the OECD defines OER as digitized materials offered freely and openly for educators, students and self-learners to use and reuse for teaching, learning and research. OER includes learning content software tools to develop, use and distribute content and implementation resources such as open licenses. So basically it's open source materials within education. Um, I think it's pretty interesting to look at the idea behind OERs. And according to the ULIT Foundation, it's a pretty big organization that, that uh, supports uh, OER culture internationally. Well, I'm not, I'm not going to read everything now. It's just, well, I think it's at the, uh, that sentence is, uh, presents the ideology behind the whole uh, movement pretty good. Uh, at the heart of the movement toward OER is a simple and powerful idea that the world's knowledge is a public good and that technology technology is in general and the World Wide Web in particular provide an extraordinary opportunity for everyone to share, use and reuse knowledge. So that's basically the bigger content, the bigger context uh, or ensemble is set in. Now, uh, just a few examples for OER projects in Germany. Um, there's Serlo, that's an online network for students and it only contains open education material for many i don't know for, for what's called chemistry math german literature well yeah for a lot of different uh, study fields and then another example is a book of teaching and learning with technology is a uh, it's a free access uh, a book uh, that, that's uh, free accessible and it was uh, re released in February 2011 under a Creative Commons license yeah, and it's free, can be accessed freely on the web. It's a really good book with a lot of really good uh, contributions. And then there's our project, the, the Loop Ensemble, which is released under uh, the GNU General Public License. And there are many more, that, just a few examples. Okay, the ensemble itself. Um, like I said, it consists of three instruments. They are named Ed, Drumbo and Jerry. Uh, yeah, uh, one thing I have to set straight uh, at 
first is they're in German because they're made for German music education. We want to translate them. There's a lot of text within the instruments and I'm going to talk about that soon. Yeah, but at uh, the moment it's still in German, uh, which shows the name at because uh, mainly it's about additive synthesis. Then Drumbo is a drum machine uh, and it works with frequency modulation and ampli amplitude modulation. Well, and Jerry is basically filtered noise, so it's kind of a subtractive synthesis. Um, yeah, and Ed is like a ba bass synth, basically, and uh, Drumbo is, like I said, is a drum machine, and then we have uh, Jerry, which, well, it, it's, it's a pad synth and, and a lead synth, but... These instruments, they, they are well. They are not uh, limited to these musical roles. So they, they can do well, like every other electronic instruments. You can do noise sound experiments with them. But I think that what we tried is to to um, uh, design them that way, so it's easy to experiment with them. Okay. The basic formula the uh, instru uh, instruments were designed after is the famous low threshold high ceiling. Uh, you may have heard it before. Yeah, but on the one hand, the instruments uh, should offer an easy access to understanding electronic music and uh, they allow beginners or even non-musicians non to express themsel themselves musically. I believe that uh, electronic instruments are pretty easy to learn compared to other instruments. For example, the guitar. There's a lot of haptic stuff w with the hand you have to learn and an uh, electronic instrument that works with a sequencer. It's compared to uh, other instruments, it's, it's easier to, to uh, have, well, to, to uh, have early success when you make music with it. Um, and then on the other hand, that the high ceiling, we wanted the instruments to be capable of complex musical actions. And, and we wanted them to offer a deep insight about the, the way uh, electronic instruments work. So, for example, due to the character of PD, you could have a, a very deep look into the code of the instruments and explore it. Before I show the instruments, some uh, central aspects. First of all, there was a problem of flexibility. I mean, there are a lot of teaching styles in music education. For example, there's action-oriented uh, music education where people actually do something and try to, to learn by doing that. Then there's uh, self-learning is another big thing where the individual learners uh, are, are supposed to find their own way to learn. And then there's a classical chalk and talk teaching style where a teacher is standing in front of the class, like I do now, and, uh, and talking all the time while the um, audience has to listen and be quiet and uh, focus their attention. And this chalk and talk teaching style is uh, still pretty dominant, uh, very common in, in, in schools. And that's why, yeah, we, we had to consider all these different teaching styles and uh, in the design of the instruments. Mm, yeah, and this this idea of flexibility. It's also uh, important when you look at the character of the instruments as as musical instruments, because, like I said before, we wanted them to to be able to do loop-based electronic dance music, like this every club music, let's call it club music. <laughs> and on the other hand, um, we wanted them to be able to do abstract sound art. Um, I'm not sure if I mentioned it yet, but the uh, instruments can be synced via network. 
so yeah that ma makes them uh, makes it very easy to to do like uh, uh, um, sing music together like electronic dance music for example and from a didactical point of view it's uh, pretty good for for a group sessions within the classroom when groups are supposed to make music together yeah i think i already mentioned the interactivity and the self uh, uh, well no i didn't um another aspect that's very important is interactivity basically you use the instruments and every module of the instruments i show that later uh, can be can be uh, there's a little what button beneath, uh, beside and you can uh, activate another patch and open another patch and then uh, the module for example additive synthesis is explained then and so uh, you can by interactively uh, play the instrument or play uh, you you can um, try to understand it and that makes it self-explanatory <clears throat> yeah, I mentioned the network connection that makes it suitable for group lessons, and then there is this yeah, uh, then there is this extra presentation version that makes it suitable for chalk and talk teaching style. That means we have a, a extra version of the instrument that uh, well, you connect your laptop to your Beamer and then just uh, pr uh, present it, and well, you can talk about it like you would use a. a Blackboard. Yeah, maybe one last point before I show the instruments. Um, yeah, to make to, to, to give them uh, to, to to strengthen the character of musical instruments, we try to give them external controllers, and that's the Nano Control Two and the LPD Eight. And the last instrument, uh, it's supposed to, uh, it can be controlled via mouse and, and laptop. And the basic ideas behind this is simply that the um, controllers are to be, uh, should be cheap. Well, so that everybody can afford it. But they're not necessary. You can control the whole instruments completely only with mouse and uh, keyboard. I guess I don't have to explain what pure data is, do I? I think everybody knows it, right? Okay. Yeah, here's a download link. It's on the pure data website. Yeah, but maybe maybe let's have a look at the instruments themselves. And I'm trying. Uh, um. Yeah, it's made in PD, like I said. It's. Uh... Do we have sound? Uh, yes. Yeah, sorry, I, I think I have to uh, activate PD here. I have to do this and this. Yes. Uh, well, that's the main GUI. I think Drumbo, the drum machine, is the most complex instrument. Yeah. Um, what can I say? Yeah, the basic principle, like I said before, is that you have this GUI, and there are all the modules. And the main idea is that you know uh, that the students are then able to click uh, here on what. What is this? And now it opens in the other screen, and then these patches open. And for example, let's do frequency modulation. <laughs> yeah, it's a lot of text. <laughs> but frequency modulation, uh, it's not always like this. Frequency modulation is a pretty complex thing, as you may know. Yeah, and then you can, here it is explained, what is it, like with examples, and here are examples too. You can uh, then listen to it and try to understand it step by step. For example, here, this would be a next step. And then you can open another example. And suddenly, uh, 
a complex sound is uh, resulting and you can try to understand how it happened. Um, yeah, and maybe let's have a look at Amplitude. Now let's have a look at this. Yeah, here you have uh, ADSR envelopes. And now you could, for example, uh, choose an example here and activate it. And then you see how these uh, envelopes are made and how they work. And in the text, you have everything explained. And that's basically the way everything works. You, um, every module of the instruments can be uh, interact interactively explored. Yeah, and then you can try to understand electronic music and sound into this by doing so. But they can also be used as, like, and then when you understood this, you could uh, use this knowledge to make music. I don't know. I prefer to... Like I said, it could be used as a normal drum machine. Maybe I start with that. Uh, let's, I like this sound. And then you have a sequencer built in there, like a very standard sequencer. And here are some examples too. Like everything is filled with presets to make it more explorable. And let's activate a preset here. And then you could... Uh, there's hardly any bass. Never mind. Yeah, and there are a lot of presets, like different sound banks. So, I mean, it's a really simple drum machine in the end, like uh, the other instruments too. They are simple bass synth and uh, simple lead synths, but st the ma main idea is to 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 explain this background of, of these traditional instruments within electronic music. <clears throat> okay. Yeah, here we see the network connection. You can. Uh, connect them via cable connection or wireless connection and then play together. Okay, so that's basically it, I think. I hope I could get the basic ideas across. So any questions? No, it's PDX standard. <laughs> yeah, I know. There's, yeah, I know. I, I already talked about that problem today. Oh, sorry, I didn't. Do, do no, 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 no. But yeah, yeah. Yeah, I, I mean, there, there's no support anymore. That's true. I mean, the, I think that uh, what you are uh, talking. Okay. Okay. Yeah, we did. Uh, as part of a master thesis, we gave three workshops and we used it. Well, and it's more uh, more as a, like an explorative evaluation. We did uh, interviews after that. Well, and, and it was pretty uh, successful, I would say, in, in the end. Like, well, there was um, a strong interest from the participants of the workshops. And, well, m most of them, they. I think the main problem is there that, that most of the students we um, had in the workshops, they, they um, uh, see their uh, music class at school as really, really boring. <laughs> and that's why they, they, are, uh, they are grateful for everything new, basically. But on the other hand, still... Um, 
there was this phenomenon that 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 they started playing uh, these instruments and heard these sounds, and then they re were reminded of sounds they knew from, uh, they know from from the music they listen to every day. Yeah, and then that's uh, the, that's where the interest started, sort of, and then they uh, started digging deeper and trying to understand how a complex uh, sound is built, and yeah, and. No, but there were problems too. I, I don't want to sound too uh, euphoric. Um, for example, the, the whole text thing is a big problem because, they are, uh, like you, like I said before, there are a lot of. There's a lot, it's hard to explain something that's quite complex, like frequency modulation, with uh, yeah, w w without uh, a lot of text and. Yeah, and that was a problem that that most of the students are pretty lazy when it comes to reading. Yeah, but but still, I mean, there are different characters. For example, there were some uh, students who who were like reading all the time and were really fascinated by what they read, and then there were those that only wanted to to play and only. Uh, Try to connect the instruments and play together, even though they had no idea what electronic music is all about. But that's what I was trying to say before: that there are a lot of different styles of learning and a lot of different styles of teaching. And uh, what I like about these instruments is that they um, that they there are many ways to use them. So, yes, I think I didn't really answer your question, <laughs> but. <laughs> <laughs> Okay. I, I, I have more questions, but if people want to try it, that's it. Yeah. I would love to see a five minute demo on how to make such beautiful displays. Yeah, that's. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the problem is uh, my colleague did that. Yeah, and he's, like I said, he's sick in bed. But basically, basically he just imported um, like GIF, GIF pictures. I mean this. Just a picture behind each one. Yeah, exactly. That that's just um, like a gift picture behind it, and well, and the rest that that that's uh, part of PD Extended, like these. Uh, what are they called again in English? Arbeitsflächen. Anyone? <laughs> yeah, the panels, panels, exactly. Yeah, I like these panels. That's yeah, but but uh, that, that's something we. Sorry. Yeah, and the, and the knobs are part of uh, PD too. It's just like like all, all around is uh, all around the knobs is a GIF, and and then the knobs are part of PD extended, and the, they are just put in uh, uh, onto the GIF sort of. Yeah, yeah, but it's true. That's uh, you. Uh, as far as I know, you uh, um, there, there's a there's a. Um, well, there's a way in, in PD Extended to import them. You just make them part of your GUI. So it would be theoretically, uh, it would be um, possible to, well, to do even more complex GUIs where everything is part of uh, just uh, these pads and these knobs are just put onto the uh, GIF picture. I mean, well, okay. Yeah, doesn't matter. Yeah, yeah, but we we heard that a lot. It's, that that the GUI is the most interesting thing about uh, working with PD Extended here. Yeah. yeah. Okay, so if you're interested, you can just um, I'm gonna uh, show you the download link again, and if you're interested, you can just. Try them out, and like I said at the beginning of the presentation, I would be really grateful for a critique. Uh, that's because we are not, me and my colleague, we aren't really experts. That was pretty new for us, everything. And for example, well, the, the, the whole um, code behind the instruments that's, was basically trial and error for us. I mean, we we learned a lot while doing it. Yeah, and for us, it would be pretty helpful to get some critique concerning those. So, if you want to download them, have a look at them, and you can. I'll be here for some more time, and if you want to, you can uh, criticize me. <laughs> okay.
Okay. Uh, thanks. <laughs> <laughs>